The next level of sophistication is introducing baryons, gas and dissipative processes that must affect it, including things like star formation and energy input by stars, formation of black holes, their uh, activity is active galactic nuclei, their feedback through energy input in the surrounding gas and so on. These are far more demanding technically and it's only in recent years that we had simulations good enough to really compare to observations. The key problem is dynamical range. A lot of dissipative stuff happens on very small scales, scales of stars or interstellar separations which are of the orders of parsecs and yet we want to look at regions of the universe that are megaparsecs or even gigaparsecs in size. So it's simply hard enough to achieve sufficient numerical resolution that will cover both scales. And truth be told, sometimes we don't really understand how some important processes work. We have a pretty good idea how stars form, but not in a really excellent detail we would like. So next movie we'll take a look at a formation of cluster of galaxies using full hydrocode, again by the Max Planck group, and showing how different physical properties change in time. Now here we start at the redshift of 20, when just the first seeds of large-scale structure form. The different panels show different components, the density of the dark matter, the density of baryons or gas, their temperature, shock waves, and predictions for Sinaev's Ludovic effect. Note how similar yet in detail different structures are as you look at different physical properties of these. The cluster proper only forms at the redshifts of a few. Now you begin to recognize that this could be in fact a cluster. But if you had eyes that could see both dark matter and hot gas, this is the comparison of things you would see. Now, look at behavior of gas. It's heated by the shocks of infalling pieces as they collide. Uh, kinetic energy is transferred into radiation, which heats the gas itself. This is why clusters are filled with the X-ray gas. <clears throat> Introducing dissipation opens much richer physics. You can see many more phenomena than you could possibly see with just the old uh, dark matter simulation that only have gravity. Here we're going to zoom in on different physical properties in, in order, first uh, zooming on one and then the other. Note in detail how different structures are and especially the richness of structures that show up in the X-ray gas. Especially as, say, big pieces fall in and they hit the gas, creating shock waves and even like cometary trails. Here it's the same sequence but zooming in on a different portion. So as you can see, spherical uniform homogeneous model does not really seem to correspond well to reality. Our spherical top hat model was a useful toy model to understand the basic physics of the collapse of density fluctuations, but the reality is much more complicated and this is why we need to use numerical simulations to actually figure out what's going on. Again, these simulations produce a wealth of information that can be mined in detail. These are just some snapshots from cosmological simulation, again done by Max Planck Group. You can see that there is familiar structure of cosmic filaments and, and so on and voids, but now there is much more at play here with gas reacting to the feedback from stars, collisions and so on. It is this kind of simulation that actually is getting us really closer to understanding the formation of first galaxies. 
Let's go back to the old problem of colliding spiral galaxies, how n-body simulations really started. Now we can collide galaxies that have multiple components, dark matter, gas, stars, or even black holes. And what is seen in simulations like these, the dark matter behaves pretty much in the way we've seen before. But the gas dissipates energy, and that makes it collide and collapse much deeper and much faster. Because gas can dissipate energy, it goes deep in the potential well. It becomes denser, and they can cause bursts of star formation or feed supermassive black hole if one exists, causing activity of quasar nature. So let us then end with a movie of colliding spiral galaxies that include dark matter, stars, gas, and each of the two galaxies has a big black hole in the middle, which then gets fed by the gas in simulation and feeds back energy through radiation and kinetic energy input into the, pressure, into the gas itself. Let's take a look. There are two identical model spiral galaxies, and as they collide, first you see the usual tidal distortions, Things will look very symmetric because the two galaxies were intentionally made to be identical at start. This provides an unuseful check on consistency because you expect to see things be exactly symmetric until things get more complicated with input of energy from uh, dissipative processes later. Right now, uh, this is just the first passage. Uh, there is already some feedback of gas being heated by the collision and now the black holes ignite. Both galaxies now have active nuclei that causes shock waves and expansion of gas away from the system. Some of the gas keeps collapsing, it feeds more of the black hole activity in the middle which can reignite again. And this is how active galactic nuclei are supposed to work. In the end, you can see a very dense disk of gas. You don't see the black holes, of course. And uh, this is getting very close to our understanding how the, of the origins of the nuclear activity in galaxies in the universe. So this is our theoretical understanding of the formation of large-scale structure and in, in its evolution in the universe. Next, we will start talking about actual observations of the large-scale structure.